Folks, uh, hello, welcome to the stream or the VOD, depending on which way you're watching this. Uh, I'm Alan, welcome. Uh, today what we're going to do is uh, continue, this is part five, uh, I've realized, of working on a Python script, uh, actually a couple of Python scripts, that will let us use um, Altrix Designer, uh, which is an ETL tool, to talk to a Redshift database um, with MFA enabled on an account. Um, Altrix is an ETL tool, so it mushes up data and can write it into a database and do all kinds of crazy stuff that's beyond my ken. But um, the the trick that that we're running into right now um, is it. So in you when you put and actually, so I I don't I very rarely used Altrix, so um, this may this may take me a little bit to figure stuff out. Um, but like if the the process that you can use for um, pushing data into Amazon's Redshift is you can upload data uh, into Amazon S3 and then use a copy statement in Redshift to grab the data and just load it in really quickly. Um, and the reason you wanna do that, and, and it's better to do that than if you, you could just have Altrix talk directly to the Redshift database, but like if you have a million rows, the way that Altrix works is you have to, um, and the way that Redshift works uh, over the ODBC connections, is you have to basically fire up each of those million rows as an individual query. Um, the copy statement is magic that Amazon has created between Redshift and F3, S3, where it basically lets it grab um, uh, an S3 file, like a CSV file, and just m jump it in and mush it into a table automatically. Um, and so that's great. The problem is with our security setup, we use multi-factor authentication. And with multi-factor authentication, uh, it multi-factor authentication doesn't work with Altrix. Um, and the reason why, and like, or we have not been able to get it to work with Altrix. And the, the reason why is with Altrix, basically when you, when you're doing an S3 upload, which is what this module is that I just dropped in, you put in an access key and a secret key. Well, our accounts have access keys and secret keys, but they also require an MFA token to go with them. And there's nowhere in here to put in the MFA token. Um, so what I've been working on is, so what, but what Altrix will let you do is, oh, this is cool. I'm actually, so, I, so I'm on my, on my Mac, but I'm using a windows machine that's from Amazon's workspaces. So it's, it's up in the cloud somewhere. Uh, and, and I'm on it. Um, I'm actually a few levels deep because I'm looking at a windows machine, which has OBS software for streaming to Twitch, which is showing me the window of my Mac which is then showing me the window of the Windows machine that's in the cloud. So if you see me get a little bit wigged, and I've got two mice over here for three machines. So if you get me see me bumble a little bit, that's part of what's going on. Um, but so we've got this, we've got this capability in Altrix natively to send stuff up, but it doesn't, we can't do that with our system. Um, and by the way, the, the, the code that I'm working on will actually work for any time that we need to do an S3, um, an upload to S3 from Altrix, uh, just S3, like that's that's the big jump that you have to do. Um, so I don't know why you would do that other than to push stuff into Redshift or um, what's the other database, uh, Postgres, or any of the other databases that Amazon has. Um, but but that's the case. So I, I the the script that I've written, I think it's okay. Give me one second. I'm gonna add the screen. Oh, but then I can't see it. I need to figure out a way to do that. I gotta get a second monitor. This will be fine. Um, I know this will be fine. Um, I just don't remember where I put the... So this was an answer that I did for somebody on Stack Overflow. You can jump, okay, close. Uh, one of these days I'll read those tips except I won't actually. Uh, open recent. Oh, come on. I must have moved the project. Uh, bear with me one second. Just wanna figure out where I put that real quick and you don't necessarily need to see me. Like, I don't care that you see me bumping around my, um, 
file structure. Here we have some MFA CLI tool. I don't remember what I did with it. Uh, all right, so step one, you gotta find your code. I moved some stuff around to make it easier to deal with, and now I can't find it. Uh, bear with me one second, folks. This is highly entertaining TV, I understand. AWS MFA CLI tool. That is it. Oh, I'm in it already. I deleted the other one. Okay. So, uh, I've got I've got a couple different scripts right here. Um, the the so I built these scripts just on the command line um, and. Uh, the if you watch the previous parts, and this is the thing that I don't know about these videos, these are still new to me. I don't know if I should rehash this. Probably should. Um, I think I have anything in the main? Do I now? Okay. Hello world. Uh, why is that blue? So the the way that this works is. Um, oh, I should put that in there too. I'm get, I'll get better at this. Um, maybe we gotta go. I guess. Uh, the way that this works is for the MFA token. Basically, what you have to do is you have uh, a credential system set up in your Amazon, or a set of credentials setting up on your command line. Um, ooh, that'll be interesting to do. And you take those credentials along with your MFA token and you send that to Amazon. And then Amazon sends you back a temporary set of credentials and then you use that temporary set of credentials when you're communicating with S3. Uh, and so I've split this into two separate parts. Um, the first part is the go and get token. And the second part is communicate with F S3. And and there's the third part, which is the database connection, just calls over and makes it go. Um, the reason I split the, the get token and the S3 part is we don't want to have to have people enter an MFA token every time they do it. So you can set a, a, a timeout for the MFA token, which right here is 900 seconds, which I think is 15 minutes. Um, and you can go up to 36 hours. Um, and we're going to have some conversations with our uh, security team about how long we want these tokens to last. Um, Maybe 15 minutes, maybe an hour, maybe eight hours, maybe all 36. Who knows? We'll figure it out. Um, I doubt 36, so probably probably either an hour or eight hours, but we'll see. Um, but that token lasts for that long. And so what we can do is, I believe, and this is where we'll hack around a little bit, uh, hopefully in Altrix, we can go get the token one time, or you, you enter your MFA, the six-digit number, so that's what the six-digit number is here, that changes every 30 seconds. You can enter that once, have Altrix go grab the credentials, the MFA credentials, or the session token, pull that down and store it, and then the other script can continue to use that until they expire. So that way, every time you're running a process, you're not sitting there banging your head against the wall going, oh God, I gotta put this number in again, or this new number, because they always change. Um, so that's the basic idea. There's basically three three processes. The last two might get marched into one, but um, so we get the credentials, we send stuff to S3, and then we um, and then we do the copy command that Redshift uses to load the data in from S3. Um, so I'm just going to start trying to get them to go uh, to to get there um, before before I try and move it into Altrix. And again, I've I've basically never used Altrix, so um, this is gonna, there's going to be a lot of fumbling going on here. Um, but this is I'm just showing you how I'm doing the work. Um, just to continue, kind of continue the series, because you saw that on all the other one too. So what should happen, like if I try and run this right now, it should fail. Oh, config pro doom demo CLI couldn't be found. I forgot. Um, I used some tricky code on my side that 
Uh, so let me show you this. Again, this is rehash from some of the other videos, but that's fine. So Amazon stores its credentials, the, the command line stuff, which is um, bot03, this Python module, um, and the Amazon command line system, which is AWS. Um, it's also my initials, which I'm still angry about. Uh, it stores its credentials in this credentials file. And hang on one second. So in my credentials file, I don't do it the traditional way. I've got it basically set up um, ideally so that I can do this type of uh, uh, broadcast without having to worry about accidentally flashing my credentials. So I've got a process that I run that's a GPG encryption and like all this other stuff. The, the trick is what's not in there right now is this demo CLI. I think that's what it was. Yeah, demo CLI. So that this config profile isn't there. Um, and then uh, I'm gonna move this over here for a second. So I've got standby. Let me just grab. Um, and so I, I've, I've got a, I've got something that's set up that should be able to update that. Um, this is this personal sandbox should update those credentials to use the demo CLI, but it doesn't work. Oh, I know that's that's broken right now. So I'm gonna have to do this the old-fashioned way. So bear with me one second. Um, I just need to look at what the. Um, This is what I need. So I just need these. I'm gonna make a note of that too. Um, so I'm doing, I've got this little app, uh, MV Alt that I use for my uh, Book of Magic, my grimoire. Um, Um, whoops. What's going on? Oh, wrong mouse. Ha! There's, an, there's another mouse floating over there that I couldn't see, or that I was looking at that wasn't the right one. Um, profile name. So this is what I need to put in that credentials file uh, to, get, uh, to get that working. So I'm gonna do that with the credentials because right now it doesn't, um, My little, that little switcher that I just showed you should have actually done that and should have worked, but it's not something I broke something on it. Um, and I gotta fix it. Uh, even though I may have just remember or figured out what that was. Um, now I gotta find the right set of credentials. That's not it. That's it. So obviously I don't want to show these to you. Um, I actually could show these to you because the, um, I'm not going to, uh, but I could show them to you because that account has MFA enabled on it. So even with the access key and the secret key, you couldn't get in without the MFA token. Now you're about to see the MFA token so that would let you in. Um, but the MFA token goes every 30 seconds. But anyways, uh, so let's make let's see if we can get this to work. Let's start with that. Uh, can we do it before it expires? No, we cannot. We'll wait for a second. Oh, come on. It locked. Six, 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 son of the devil. So we run this now, getting credentials. Okay, cool. 
So what that did is that just updated this JSON credentials file, which again, I'm not gonna show because it has live credentials in it right now. That account that it's talking to is very locked down. The only thing it can do is touch one S3 bucket and that's it, but I'm still not gonna flash the credentials. Um, but the inside that JSON credentials is a blob that looks like this, um, or an object that looks like that, um, obviously with much longer strings after each one of those things. Um, so the so this this function works um, to grab the credentials. Uh, so the next thing I want to do is check the push to redshift. And so this accesses that JSON credentials file, and then um, I'm actually not going to print that out. It's fine. I've already. Whoops. I don't know what language I'm in right now. Um, so it it uses those credentials and loads them in, and then creates a Bado3 resource, so basically just an, an object in, in Bado3 with those credentials, which is how it gets loaded here, and then it shoots up to this bucket, this text file. Um, and so what we can do and again, this is just me checking to make sure this stuff still works. Um, so here, which one was it? MFA sent file. So that's this. So if I delete this, Back. It's gone, but when I run the script, and eh, let's do this, um, new. Uh, so when I run this, it's going to grab those credentials and it's going to break. Multi-factor authentication failed with invalid MFA one-time passcode, huh? Oh, I know what just happened. Um, this still gets me about PyCharm. I was on this file, I ran this file, everything was cool. I clicked over here. When I hit run again, it was still running the prior file, as you can see up here. So I just reran this file and those, that token has expired. So I'm gonna rerun it once again to make sure we got fresh credentials. There we go. And now if I switch over here, and go push to S3, which is what this one is. Run it. Sending the file to S3. Status code zero is good. Refresh. There's our file. So that that's working too. Um, so those are the two things that I want to get going right now. Uh, and I'll start with the start, right? Um, so we're gonna get rid of this. And this is where It's gonna be a little tricky because I haven't really used Alteryx at all. Let me get this all the way up so I can see as much as possible. As well as possible. Is that gonna work? Nice. Um, yes, I don't even know where. A oh, developer, I'm guessing. There's run command. Ooh, Python. Interactive Jupyter Notebook is loading. Wow. Got all kinds of crap in there. I don't want that. happen. Workflow. Got a temp file version. Okay. Bail direction horizontal. It's all non center packages and people. All 
All right, we forgot how to do this. Run a Python script. This is what we want to do. Use a Python tool. Use an older version. Sorry. Okay. Use the Python tool. Let's go there. Looks like it wants you to do the Jupyter Notebook. I don't really want the Jupyter Notebook, but like it doesn't actually have to do anything. You'll see the following screen in the tools configuration window. This is a reminder to run your workflow whenever you connect to a Python tool. This pulls the input data in the Python tool so that you can bring it into your Python code, okay? Okay, and it fires up your burnout books. Oh, okay, so these are like little chunks, I guess. List all non-standard packages to be imported by your script here. Only missing packages will be installed. Package, install packages, Panda. Oh, okay, so cool. So we just do this. Bado 3. Then we're going to run and see what happens. Nothing exploded. Still got a hell of a world, so it still made it down there. <clears throat> Cell. Okay, that's cool. So you can run individual things. Nice. It's a Jupyter virtual environment. Okay. Code. What else we got? My question is, I can't tell if that's still going. Looks like it's getting longer. Downloading, downloading. Requirement already satisfied. Downloading. Su successfully installed by three. Okay. So we rerun this. What happens? Get mesh back up. All right. So we're gonna make some notes here. Um,
these ones are, there it is. across virtual machines that are in the cloud into my actual machine. That's like so cool. Now how do you let's refresh, get rid of this stuff? Restart the kernel. What does that do? Do you want to restart the current kernel? All variables will be lost. Yeah, let's do that. Maybe. I don't really know what I'm doing in Jupyter Notebooks. There we go. Error cannot find a version of the satisfy room. Oh. Oh, I somehow put a C in there. If we run just that cells or requirement already satisfied. Okay. Cool. Okay. So now we come down here, import by three or four. It's probably fine. Is this good work? I'm assuming by the fact that it didn't explode that that's a good sign. Bado three here. Cool. So we got Bado. Now, um, The trick is I don't know if I actually need to do Amazon. I probably don't need to do the command line tool. I think it just goes in the same place on Windows, but yeah, okay. Username, .aws credentials on Windows. Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> so weird. Uh, where's Notepad? That's not helpful. So we can go back here. I know that I'm not going to flash these. Uh, AWS credential syntax. There we go. And that worked. Uh, all right, bear with me one second. Oh wait, I can do that over here, can I? Don't know what that was. Uh, so I'm just gonna make this credentials file. file. No, 
let's type a file name. Oh, come on. Uh, bear with me while I make this directory, which is apparently harder than it looks. Let's type a file name. Well, how do you make a dot file name then? Um. Okay, make their makes sense. Okay, uh, one more time. I'll be right back. I'm gonna go make a file and drop it in there. The right window? Yes. Like windows and windows and windows. It's a lot. How do you move a file? Because it named it .text. I don't want .text. It just needs to be .credentials. Windows. Does this move? Should I move? That did it. Move. There you go. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. So now we should have... Bado three up and running with tags. Can you get rid of these? We got Bado. Let's get PyCharm going. First one we want to do is get our session token. Uh, I think JSON's already there. Let's see, look at that shot. Let's let that one little hesitation run there. 
seem to work. Uh, Whoa, what's going on? Oh, ah, freaking. Um, High Charm doesn't use the same hotkeys as everything else, and it's super annoying. I have no idea where that file's gonna go, but. Or if it's gonna go, Let's see what happens. Oh, it's actually it should error because that token's wrong. Profile not found. Oh, because I'm just in the default. Study. Am I not in the code? What's, oh, I'm not in the code. Error curve, multi-factor, fail with invalid passcode. Okay, good. This is really good. This is really good. Because that means if we do this, hopefully, man, I really hope it doesn't output this. I don't think it should. It should go to a file. Cool. Does it run it fast enough? Nope. Can you collapse those? Can you pop those? All right, so what we're doing, we're just copying and pasting and the code's going. That's nice, it's just a straight Python interpreter, it looks like. 496418. I guess I can just run this one. Credentials updated, cool, okay. <laughs> so, all right. That's really good. Okay, so that that does our credential update. Eventually, we'll I'll, I'll work to pass in this, so you don't have to do it in code um, or in the code, even though it's not awful. Because um, I guess you got to click on this to set it up. I don't know, maybe. I'm just trying to figure out if we want to have like a little like input thing or whatever. Um, but that's for another time. Uh, where is, oh, why is it doing that? Shit, what's going on? Still alive? Okay. So now we're going to try the one to send to S3. Notebook changed. What? Fire up auto three there. We're gonna go back to PyCharm. So that's the first one. So now we're gonna do the push to S3. I think also needs JSON. See? That high key is supposed to select everything up. Not cool, Pajarm. Not cool. 
I'm gonna go there. So that I don't need to worry about having that credential updated again because it should already be updated. And I'm assuming since like I have no idea where that JSON credential file is stored. But because these are both in the same place, I hope that they are both in the same place. See, that seems logical. Um, so we're going to rename this file from AL. RYX Altrix. So if I uh, actually, let's just run the whole thing. Oh. Did not like that. So somehow these things must be independent. Okay, we should just be able to put in a full file path. Um, We're gonna do that this way, because I can't remember. Right? So we should be able to do, oh, we're on D drive, okay. That's interesting. Did that copy it? Yep. So when I alt tab, I'm alt tabbing between, on the Windows machine, not inside the no, I'm on the Mac, not inside the Windows machine. So we're going to do this. Here, which is backslash is always freaking me out. I'm going to do this here. So now we need to rerun this one. In a second, after it refreshes. I think that's a, uh, okay. Can you just, what do you just flip them? Can you flip them? Oh, I just realized this text is probably super small, isn't it? I love the resize out of it though. Um, but it keeps going that way. Can you do this? Resize that way. Hmm. Just arbitrary. Oh, keeps jumping. Oh yeah, I guess. So I, I'm not super worried about those right now. That didn't help. Uh, that didn't help at all, really. I want to see if, real quick if you can change. The size. Toggle to bar is toggle in as cell to bar. I don't know how to make that bigger right now. Alright, so we flipped the we flipped the slashes. Let's see if that writes. Oops. 
Where are I'm a game changer. I'm a risk taker. Right here. Oops. Did I get it fast enough? Credentials updated. Okay. Now, with luck, since those are in full file paths, if we flip these slashes, Sending file to S3, S3 file sent. That is a thing of beauty. So we just used Altrix, file from Altrix, to send data with MFA. Hell yeah. That's cool. This is, this is a, this will be very helpful for my team. Uh, and I will post a blog post about it. I'll post a blog post. I will make a blog post. I'll post on my site. I'll post about it too. Um, Cause like the code's not that complicated. It, it's, it's really not bad at all. Um, I mean, it's that, and it's that, right? You're just saving credentials. Um, it took me a long time to get there because I was bouncing around on a bunch of things. Um, but it's, it's super straightforward. Um, Actually, yeah, this is like part five. I don't know why it did. I don't remember what it, all I was doing. It took me this long to get here. Um, a, bun a bunch of explaining, though. Um, so that's awesome. So that's got the file going to S3, and now it's just a matter of... Um, so slow. Like there's some other stuff I could do, like make sure, like if it doesn't get, if it doesn't get, like I, there's error handling, some other stuff I, I'm, I will add into here uh, before long. Um, but this is the first step of like get the happy path, just make the thing go. Um, and so now the trick is, can I actually do the full bore and get it to, um, get it to right into Redshift. Gives me that warning, it's kind of scary. We're probably trying to grab others. Copy and do redshift. Also used to single clicking. There we go. Yeah, this is pretty straightforward too. Um, What's the best way to store um, environmental variables in Altrix? That's not how that's not how I'm going to want to do it though. Um, I'm going to want to have them saved off. I think. Yeah, I want to talk to the security folks about how we want to do that. Well, so what you should do is pass, is put in your username and password in a thing. All right, so we'll mess around with that for a minute. Um, Cause I'm pretty confident that that's gonna go. work. Nope. Good lord. Delete. I had delete. Oh, maybe it wants the other delete. So how do you...
Well, I can tilt down and do your dynamic input. What dynamic input? Field info, message, Python run command, test, throttle. What this? Oh, let's let you see what dynamic input is. Oh, you probably do it with that. Your list of data sources, but I want to have. So I want to have my user type in their username and password. It can I'll let it save it if it wants to. Oh, that's not work. This delete work? There. Okay. Let's see how the delete. Interface, what's an interface? Action checkbox, condition, date, drop down. Text box. Enter the text or the question to be displayed. Database name. They don't even know how to just run stuff. How do you run stuff? Run, it says. Start it somehow. Oh, text input. That looks better. It's looking for rows and columns. Protection, password encryption, can't you update passwords? Excel, I don't want Excel. Password review workflow. Interface tool to pass username and password. That's what I'm looking for, I think. Want to pass username and passwords. Input from alter interface tool are running. Yeah, and a Python script, there we go. batch file on the fly and move files from one to another. And you can probably embed the Python script inside the formula and parameterize the username and password, which gets written to the batch file and the run command tool. Would that work? Just think right here. Jesus Christ. That generates a bat file with a Python script inside. I've converted the workflow into an app for the user to enter using the password, which gets fed in the formula containing the Python script during the runtime, which ultimately gets output to the bat file. This approach works. From there on, modify the settings of the run command tool to read the newly created batch file and execute it.
Dreaming Light Argument. How do you just... Probably even the same page. Yup. Password Dungeons. To Gallery now. Solve your same password prompt. Sounds happy. need to move into here. Um, Displayed. Masks, multi, yeah, okay, that's exact. okay, that's just the help desk of the, help desk of the thing, help text. So in any tool by selecting the annotation button and selecting annotations. Mm. So I mean I guess the other thing I could do is just store the username and password. nuts because it's like no oh, actually does it have um does it have environmental variables Several commands for developing Python environment name those commands.
that's just So you can put them in the Python, or you can put them in the Windows machine in those environmental variables. Which will be fine for now. Okay. Let me do this. Oh, whoa. Control panel system advanced. account edit system environmental variables there we go nope environmental variables it says right there yeah see the thing that I don't like about these is these are plain text Let me see if I can figure out how to do. I mean, I can just store them, but like, I don't want to store them. I don't know what the best way to do this is. So let me go back and see if I can find that same workflow here. Well, okay. I don't know. Um, oops. Control Q to close Firefox on the Windows machine was not the right control cue to do. Uh, hey, it came right back. All right, I'm just gonna do environmental variables for now, just to make sure that I can get this thing working and then can figure out a better way to do that later. That, Cause that, that'll get us going. Um, that will get us going. I just wanna get this launched. I mean, I wanna be secure about it, but like, and this, this is relatively, like, this is secure cause it's on the thing. You can't get to the environmental variables, blah, blah, blah. And it should be, User variables. Okay, so it's user level. Um, all right, so now I'm going to roll off. So I'm going to do that. Stop changing. Oh. 
Oh, you know what? I hope I... So I'm just going to put in two new environmental variables here real quick. Man, I wish it didn't show those. That just seems crazy. I mean, I don't know, maybe everything does, but like, whatever. Um, see, it shrunk when I went over that other window. That's what it did. That's why I was freaking out. Okay, so now we're gonna get our Python again. Where'd it go? Oh, here we go. It's in the laboratory. Visual layout. Oh. Arrange two or more reporting elements on a page. I don't know, reporting stuff. I want it to go bye-bye though. Developer Python. Actually, where's the properties? Other properties? It's angry. Doing that, and then it does that. I was just trying to make put the note down here that this is the get credentials. Let's do it here, I guess. Oh, look at that. that happen for info and about useful oh all right whatever it's fine uh, so we're gonna come here I'm kind of cooked folks Is installed. And poor part of I'm looking over on the other monitor. It's not over there. So copy to Redshift. So again, this is it's very little code. Oh, we should do. So close. Oh yeah, we don't even need Bowder 3 for this one. We're just going straight to Redshift. You need that. So that's gonna fail right now because this over here Oh, I didn't I almost did the same thing.
I'm worried about using hotkeys right now. I don't think that file exists anymore. All right, let's just see what happens. No module name site to cut. Hey, we just did that. Where did that go? You gotta click up here first. There we go. Must be a Jupyter Notebook thing. If I if I was down there and clicked on run, it only ran that little piece. Installed successfully. No, what the hell? It literally says it installed successfully. It says it right there. KaiCop G2, yes. What the hell? There we go, better. Key error, raise key error with original key value. Raise key error from none. Key value, key error, redshift user. Is that doing it? All right, give me a second. Let me go look and see. What's going on with that? Go back to our mighty control panel. Environmental, it's a very hard word to say all of a sudden. Redshift user, redshift password. Python, Windows, environmental variables. sensitive the up and down
Oops, see? Hotkeys work differently. Or, well, I guess it just did a different thing. Type function is not scriptable. Oh, it needs to be parens. I think it's because I don't have that file in there because it looked like it connected. Um, connection string, connection timeout. Oh no, it, can, it died on the. Oh fuck. Alright, so hang on. Let me go. Does this work? file does not exist. Okay, but it, we're connected. Uh, all right, just to make this go, let's get, so this is the one that sends it. this. All right, so we're going to send this up. This should work because the token should still be there. Ah, crap. Why did that go? get run without credentials at some point? Let's just try that. Oh, I wonder if when I did that get credentials, it, I somehow ran it.
All right, I gotta go see what's up with that credentials file. JSON in there. Oh, this is frustrating. That worked. It worked, it worked, it worked. No, it's not working, it's not working, it's not working. JSON to code error with load. How is that possible? File not found, that's what I expected. File path read with open load JSON file. What the hell? That doesn't make sense. That's really concerning. That's really concerning. Because all I did was change the path and then change it exactly back and then it started working. I understand that at all. Anyways, the file should be there now. So, that's super weird. That gonna work? Yeah, okay, so the copy command's working. So copy command's working here. Why is it not working here? I'm Alex Five. So I feel like is this really is this running everything? Oh wait, does it run everything? When you just hit run, it seems like it should run all the cells. Or is it like do you have to be? I don't know enough about Jupyter Notebooks. But here we go. I'm in here. Run. Okay, troubleshooting. Come on, come on, you can do it. Maybe you can't. Does that work? Nope. Does that work? Nope. Oh, that worked. Fuck. Different hotkeys, not my favorite. All right. Let's see what's in here. None, okay. Well, that would explain it. What does this have? Environ. Environ. 
environ is not a callable object. So how do you get Somehow I gotta get it. Um, I could just throw in a JSON. For now. Again, this isn't the long term. Like, I want to figure out how to like get it so you can like enter it in as you know in the password when you're messing with the workflow. Um, which I'm sure there's a way to do it. I just don't know how to do that. I don't want to spend time. Figure, like, I want to get this working first. Um, Set the environmental variable. Get env. So it's not pulling Python Windows user var. Yeah, this is all about adding the Python path. I don't want that. How to get and set. Oh, you know what? I wonder. This is the Python environment. It's not talking to the Windows environment, I'll bet. I'll bet that's what's going on. Because I mean, those values are set. I've checked them now twice. Let's make a JSON. Um, where's Notepad? Notepad. I should put, yeah, you know what? I'm gonna use this, so we're gonna do this. Stop it. But sure. Yes, as a matter of fact, Notepad plus plus is what I would like. with Hong Kong is, so we're gonna not do that. I'm assuming this is still safe. Scary. Shows you a recent file there. How about? Doesn't like preview that, does it? No. Okay, good. This is a pretty boring working session, but this is how it goes sometimes. Yeah, sure.
Whoops. Oh, it did get over there. Control S doesn't work. You have to do well, whatever. They're backwards, but now it's not. I am gonna be so screwed up on my hotkeys. It's not even funny. Except it's gonna be funny. So we're just gonna save this. Users Alan S. AWS. Is none an option? So now I'm looking for my apps and it's not that way, it's over here. So we can get rid of that. Um, so do, 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 do. with open what was that path? I'm just gonna pull off this one. How is Python scoped? Is that gonna is that gonna work? Oh, you know what I can do. I can do this. That's delightful. Let's do this. No, it's fine. Let's try it. Ah, come on, hotkeys. Yeah, see, I'll bet, I'll bet that's trying to get the Python environment, and it's not hitting the Windows environment. I guess. I mean, I can't think of any other thing, and I'm like, I could go dig into that, but I'm just not gonna screw with it right now. Uh, let's see what happens here. File not found error. What do you mean file not found? Red shift credentials. Did I spell something wrong? I must have. Also, let's pin you because I like you. Red SHIFT. Whoops, that's not work. Oh, that JSON. Uh, I guess really, JSON credentials should be a .json file. You know what? Just because this is slightly easier to do. I'm gonna regret that. I wanna go back and actually make that called. Okay, that's fine. I'll do that in a second. Oh, is that one called JSON credentials.json? I don't know. We'll find out in a second. 
Oke, okay, let's do it. Let's import JSON. Also, just because I like having things alphabetical. Work for me. Copying to Redshift. Timeout expired. Rough. I feel like I've heard this song 500 times. What am I doing? Yeah, let's see if this actually... I have a feeling this is a scoping thing. I hope it is, because that would make it easier to address. I don't think I spelled any of that right. T-I-A-L-S. But also, yeah. It's not gonna work because it's scoped differently, right? Is that what's happening? I forget how scopes in Python work. Oh, no, it worked. Oh, well, the username and password I put in are, were bogus because I was typing that. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, okay, so now I'm going to go over here. We're actually going to edit the username and password. Maybe. Taking a long time. That's not a good sign. Crap. Timeout expired. So it's not. Oh! I know what's going on. Wow, I did that all bad. What just happened? And I didn't even see it. Whew. Does that work? Nope. Stop. So this is, should show me the username. I did the username, right? Not password. Um, this should show me the username very quickly. Thank you. What the problem is, is the AWS workspace is not allowed to talk to Redshift because I've got a security group on Redshift that's set up to only allow my IP address in. get an EC2 because I can't remember how to get to them otherwise. Ooh, look at all those. 
Uh, why do I have two VPCs? Shit. I wonder if that new one... Amazon Workspaces Security Group, okay. It created a VPC. This is where I don't know enough about networking and the Amazon VPCs to let one talk to another one. Um, and I'm not going to flash this stuff up there because it's security group stuff. Uh, it would probably be okay, but um, I don't know enough about it to know that. So there's Redshift. All right, so I just, wrong button. And it's fine, I'm just trying to figure out where I am. Um, I just told Redshift to allow connections from anywhere, which is not how I'm gonna leave it set up. I just wanna see if this works. It worked. Okay, so all I'm wanting into is, is a security issue where, oh, this, Copy command has been the one that has screwed me up a bunch. Um, yeah, the, I mean, it's working though. So it's just a security group issue. Uh, that's all that was happening. It, so the reason it couldn't get there is Redshift had been locked down to only my IP address. So I just, and I'm gonna lock it back down to only my IP address, but just for a minute, I was trying to see what would happen with just opening it to the world. Um, and that's, that worked. Um, now nobody can get to it, not even me. Um, Cause I just deleted all the inbound rules. Yeah, so if I run this again, it's gonna choke again. And that's because Redshift, like the security group that sits on top of Redshift isn't, uh, isn't open. Okay, but it works, so that's good. So I've got, so that's the things, right? So we've got the code for each one of the things. That was not bad at all, actually. I mean, it took long, uh, it took a while, but. Um, I still don't know why that other one freaked out. I'm not going to worry about it right now, though. Um, so now I need to work with... So... Like, right now, I'm just writing up a CSV file. Uh, by hand. So I'm just making a CSV file like that. Uh, need to actually work with Alteryx to actually send send data into Alteryx and then run from it, run it from there. Um, this is cool. It's cool. It's gonna work, or it's working. Like that's it. So that's that's the solution right there. Uh, and I'll post about this. But that that gets. Um, that allows you to use Alteryx in the copy command. Yeah, so that's that was using the Redshift copy command to push MFA backed credential uh, MFA backed S3 credentials up. And truly, really, so it's not the Redshift isn't the problem. Uh, Redshift can talk to 
S3, that's fine. It's the pushing stuff to S3 that's the problem. So this this is the key, um, or these two are the key. So you got to do the bounce to get the MFA uh, session token credentials, and then and then just use it, um, and then you're you're golden. Um, to Altrix folks, I'll make a video about this. But Altrix folks, a a very useful thing so that I don't have to hack this, and I'm guessing other people will be more and more interested in this over time, would be to basically mimic this behavior with um, with your general S3 upload or your, or yeah, anything that does your S3 uploads, which is allow somebody to input an MFA token and, uh, and then set a timeout um, up to 36 hours and then store those credentials and then use those credentials during uh, transit. That's cool. Uh, cool, so that was building a Python module for Altrix to push tables to Redshift and with MFA enabled part five. Uh, that was a long time getting there. Uh, would have taken me less time if I wasn't casting, but I, I like the process of going through that. It makes me, I, I learn a bunch as I'm going through it too. Um, so, cool. Uh, all right, folks. Uh, Thanks for watching. We'll see you. Have a good one. Um, take care and be kind. Later.